Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad with the uh, Shogun Katana Stingray shuttle, the uh, SKS. Uh, we had a tie, and I, I really thought Stingray was fitting. So, I've just combined the three, and we now have our uh, SKS shuttle. Anyway, we are trying to go up to uh, Tremonia Station. We have a load of cargo. We just have uh, two crew this trip, uh, Valentina and Boris, who has been uh, cleared to fly this time, as we might need his expertise for this mission. Anyway, I'm talking too long, and our relative inclination is getting way off track. So SAS is on. Throttle is set to full. Ignition. Good light. Clamps are off. We're going to uh, skid a little bit. We are actually at... We're very close to our maximum rated tonnage this mission. So I do not doubt for a second that we're going to need some help from our OMS system to uh, finish out our orbit. We're just going to try to lean into this a little bit and uh, get going skyward. Anyway, we have some uh, work to perform at Tremonia. We also need to see how well this thing can dock with the uh, the space station, especially at its uh, full rated crew ca or, uh, carry capacity. So this is uh, yet another test mission. It is uh, kind of light duty. We do have a contract to do a three Kerbal in low Earth orbit, which of course we will do after we have finished all of our business up at Tremonia Station, so I need to worry about this relative inclination and uh, rather delicately piloting this thing to orbit, so I will pick all of you up there. And uh, while the SKS is a little fidgety, it is uh, alarmingly easy f to fly uh, on launch, I should say, than the uh, Shuriken it is uh, assuming the heavier duties for, so really uh, not a whole lot to complain about this launch, although that uh, fidgetiness did make uh, relative inclination a little uh, iffy at times. I think we actually uh, we actually came out ahead. But uh, our, <laughs> our turn towards Horizon was happening a, a little faster than I would have liked and a little lower than I would have liked, so I did wrestle with it trying to keep the nose uh, pointed up a little bit and, of course, forgot to balance the fuel. Uh, not a big problem, seeing how it's uh, it's relatively well balanced. This just uh, does help smooth out a lot, as you can see there. Just by doing that, I'm given a, a lot more control authority very suddenly, which is extra extra nice. But we are trying to reach a 400 kilometer orbit. Those uh, F1A boosters are down and away, and we are on just our three uh, SS uh, ME or RS25 DEs, I should say. And uh, enough of that fidgetiness is back to where I have uh, armed the RCS and started to uh, rely on it a little bit instead of just our very broad gimbal range, which predictable and fun. There is our uh, roll program. We'll bring the uh, belly towards the surface, which does, of course, we need to aim uh, a little above prograde instead of below it if we are going to achieve some orbit. But uh, yeah, like I said earlier, we are trying to shoot for about a 400 kilometer orbit, which means we need to arc a little higher than we did with our initial test flight of this vehicle into a polar orbit. Uh, but it's no big deal. This thing has gobs of capacity, and I think in all of our simulated test runs done during the live streams, we tried to get it into about a 400 kilometer orbit, both to uh, simulate re-entry conditions and uh, just to make sure that it had the capacity to get there, which is always nice to do. But uh, we are going to try to put that 400 kilometers on the apogee side, not the uh, periapsis side, because uh, we are going to have to match orbits with the station, or rather let it catch up to us, or so that we can catch up to it. But anyway, uh, mission parameters for this, we are bringing a large section of cargo. It is a drive section uh, for the space station itself. Uh, we have some plans that I will probably get into uh, in a lot more detail later. We are also going to use our lovely engineer, Boris, here, who has been re-cleared for flight status after undergoing massive amounts of how not to blow stuff up training. 
to uh, reduce our part count and uh, get the station ready for the next phase of its uh, mission parameters. But we are uh, still a couple of seconds away from boot or from main engine cutoff, but I will turn you over to old me for uh, live-ish coverage. And there's engine shutdown, 485 by 95, not quite an orbit, but we will of course round that out in about 26 minutes when we get to our apogee. So let's uh, stage off the EFT. Good day, sir, and thank you. These tanks, uh, yeah, those should be locked. Let's go ahead and get our cargo bay open and get ourselves into a deployed state. And there you can see our cargo. It is about uh, 50 some odd tons of Arizona N2O and a drive section uh, for our space station. We'll uh, we'll get to more on that later. All right, extend panels and let's go ahead and uh, do, do. Why are you rolling around so violently? That is uncalled for, sir. All right, and we'll go ahead and activate one of our fuel cells and both of our radiators. And actually, we're going to leave this tank open. We can benefit from those thrusters, so why shouldn't we? You know what I'm saying? All right. I, I still don't know why you're insisting on doing this pitch thing. There's our apoapsis add maneuver. And where are we here ish? That isn't our target, is it? No, that's us. Uh, because it thinks we are a space station. Of course it does. There is not our target. That is our target. It is ahead of us. We'd like to catch up, so we should probably keep our orbit below that of our target. Yeah, that looks like it'll do it. What's that uh, total delta V? 78 meters per second. Not a problem. All right. Make sure our throttle is zeroed. Yes, let's make sure that this, okay, is deactivated. Stage those two in and we can shut down and lock the gimbal on our RS-25s. Even better. Now we will go ahead and point ourselves towards the node, which is going to take some doing. Oh, please tell me I set those thrusters up properly. That's going to ruin absolutely everything. They're not firing. Great. Just great. So apparently in my haste, I did not configure those thrusters properly, which is confirmed by checking their uh, ISP, which is listed in the right click menu. But that's a problem for a little while later. So we'll get uh, turned to face our node and then uh, time warp on over, get ourselves a nice little screenshot and then proceed with our burn. All right, well, we are about two minutes out. We're just gonna go ahead and try to ullage in these uh, AJ-10s might take a little while and might cause us also to pitch up. There they go. Ignition. Good light. It says this burn will take 54 seconds. I don't quite buy it. Yeah, maybe it will, actually. I'm glad we upped the count on those from 2 to 4. Otherwise, this would take a very, very long time. All right, 464 by 275 is where I'm going to call it because I just want to make sure that we can actually catch up to our station. Let's take a quick save. I think we're actually burning fuel from our cargo, which is fine for now. We will replace it when it comes time. Oh, yeah, burning lots of fuel from our cargo. No big deal. <laughs> All right, well, let's turn off satellites since we are a space station. Focus Earth. Thank you. And time warp until we get there.
One second. This is going to confuse the hell out of me. Ship. Accept. There we go. That looks pretty good. I think we can turn this into a uh, rendezvous. Okay, it's time for the mandatory speddy uppy bit. Uh, that is a arduous docking procedure. Uh, it took a, a little while of tinkering with nodes here before we could uh, arrive to something that looked like a rendezvous, but of course the stock close encounter uh, node system was behaving very badly and could not decide if we were going to come within a kilometer and a half or so or 150 kilometers or 500 kilometers. Either way, I left the node set up for about 150 meters per second, started the burn while uh, trying to stay angled in on the node. You can see our station there uh, hovering just to the right of the mouse pointer. There it is again. Uh, I love how distant object enhancement uh, helps highlight the names of certain things. And then uh, with the approach getting a lot closer, I just uh, relied on the separation at closest approach and then uh, laid on a whole lot of thruster power to uh, bring us within just a couple of hundred meters of the station itself. And then we would have a nice long coasting period. Uh, of course, we're I'm actually still laying on the thrusters. And this has sped up a, a whole bunch, so you can kind of tell how long this actually took. We'll uh, let MechJub set up the maneuver node for uh, uh, matching velocities at closest approach. And uh, we will try to fire into that node just a little early because, as you can see, the figure does change uh, based on your burn. And it also uh, lengthens the time of closest approach. So I'm still trying to figure out how far off the prograde node I need to be in order to uh, actually burn in a straight line because those engines are very much offset. And, uh, of course, I will overdo it a little bit. So we'll just uh, get ourselves angled in towards the target and uh, start to use some of our RCS thrusters to uh, bring that node in a, a whole lot more and then skip in and out of time warp because uh, you know how well things like to move under four times time acceleration. They never quite stay put, which is extra, extra frustrating. Yeah, as you can see it jumping back and forth there. And apparently we will be within 100 meters in about seven minutes time, roughly. So minor corrections to try to bring us in on the closest side of the station. Yeah, we're down to about 100 meters now in eight minutes, and we should be crossing the 300 meter or so uh, threshold when you can use time warp successfully. Nope, we are not. And to avoid having to chase down the station again because the game is bugged, I just uh, F5, F9. Because uh, that is absolutely ridiculous for more than one reason. The space they should not temporarily displace just because I hit the time warp key. But it does. But in physics time warp, at least it comes back. Which is always nice. So this took uh, a very, very, very long time to make a very, very long, slow approach to the station. And uh, I thought I was actually coming in on the correct side. Uh, I am not, but uh, we're going to rebalance some fuel here for uh, our docking approach just to uh, offset the weight of our cargo here. We will, of course, be putting the fuel back when it comes time. But anyway, I need to be on the top side of the station, whereas I am coming in uh, on the bottom side of the station. So we'll just uh, try to adjust our angle uh, as long as we can be along one axis with that docking port way up there, we should be okay. We'll just have to make uh, some maneuvers here. And Valentina Kerbin at the stick today is, uh, of course, the ace pilot. The one who can pull off any kind of maneuver, no matter what. And seeing as how our docking port and our alignment with the station is just completely wrong. Yeah, there's our targeting of the docking port. She will try to maneuver us up around the port and then, of course, flip us around to bring that docking port in on the correct side. And the benefits of this are numerous. 
in that we have way more authority on our H key. So now we can use the axis on which we have more thrusters uh, to more effectively uh, break and slow our approach. And then it's just a matter of um, getting things lined up, which is a little awkward because the space station seems to be wobbling under its own power somehow. It really should not have uh, any RCS turned on. So whatever is causing this mysterious wiggle certainly made things uh, a little interesting when it came to docking. And uh, surprisingly enough, this thing actually has fairly good authority when it comes to most of its maneuvering axis. It's just uh, a matter of trying to dock with something that's shimmying around like that. That is uh, extra, extra interesting. So one quick uh, back off and then try to maneuver it in again. We will actually get the hubs almost lined up, scrape a little paint, no big deal there, but that wiggling is just absolute murder. But as we finally do get our, our ports mostly lined up, <laughs> a little bit off axis, but we're, uh, we're on a good authority there. Now we'll just uh, start to nudge those ports together uh, just for a little bit of roll and then back it on in. There we go. They look like they're pretty well connected, but off by a little bit, just a little shimmy on the roll, and uh, I will turn you over to old me for up-to-date to-the-minute coverage as this switches back into real-time footage. And there's hard dock. Absolutely, finally. It's still loading. There we go. And that's just uh, kind of awkward. Our station is uh, completely dwarfed by the shuttle that brings its stuff. And uh, I don't think I configured these thrusters properly because they were not firing. They should have been. Um, not a huge deal. I think we can actually solve this uh, here in orbit. Uh, we've got some business here to attend to, like taking a quick save. But uh, I have kept you here entirely long enough, so... That'll probably do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.